Monday morning. It's just so Trish. And um, it's not week nine. It's not week nine because I forgot that this week is National 4-H week. So I figured I'd talk to you about um, just 4-H in general and why I use it, my history with it, and um, just what we're doing with it. And maybe why I like it. So, this is National 4-H Week, which is pretty cool because a couple weeks ago, my kids actually went and spoke to the Board of County Commissioners for the county to recognize it as 4-H Week. And that was pretty cool. I had three of my guys speaking. That little one, the little white-haired one that's always sticking her face in there, she stole the show up there. She was like, hi, I'm Addie. I'm in kindergarten, and, and this is my first, and I'm five years old, this is my first year in 4-H, and I'm in this club, and I'm like, it was hilarious, but um, if you're not familiar with 4-H, 4-H is a government-funded program that is typically based out of one university in your state, and that one university is the one that handles the extension agency program. I believe everybody, every state has it. I can't imagine one not having it. So, in your county, you kind of have um, an extension agent that will kind of as your research person, if you didn't know that. So, I know um, they might be handling recycling program, nutritional programs, educational programs, C grant programs. There's a lot of C grant programs around here because we're, you know, our state's surrounded by a lot of water. But actually, you know that Florida is not the number one um, sh state with the most shoreline, right? I'll get, that's a good one. Can you guess what is the state with the most shoreline? Who has the most miles of shoreline? It won't be what you expect. So, comment and tell me who you think it is and I'll tell you if you're right or wrong. Hmm. <laughs> Um, but don't forget to say, like, I think this state is has the most shoreline because I'll be like, why are you writing these states down? I forgot. Anyway, um, so there's all kinds of programs. And one of the programs is education. And so their education is 4-H. And 4-H is 4-H's. It's head, hands, health, heart. And so it's all about, you know... The pledge goes, you use your hands for clear thinking, your heart for greater loyalty, your head for, no wait, you use your, I pledge my head for clear thinking, my heart for greater loyalty, my hands for greater service, my health for better living. Now we go for my club, my community, my country, and my world. So it's all about doing better for others, which I love because, you know, that gets into the whole you know, love love your brother more than yourself. You know, biblical pledge. Um, so, and you start off at a community level. And then as you work in a community level, you like reach out to others beyond just your immediateness and you go out. So that's kind of the whole plan. And then their, not their motto, but one of the things they do is they learn by doing and they're always making the be the best better. So that's kind of the way it goes. Now, I have been in 4-H. I grew up in 4-H. I did um, the fair. And a lot of people think 4-H is just raising animals, taking it to the fair. And 4-H, that is a tiny piece of 4-H. I got to do, growing up in 4-H, um, lots of projects. Lots of projects. I did a lot of um, speaking public speaking and um, competing in speaking which was huge I love 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 that and so I really do love you know imagine that I love public speaking I should do Toastmasters but I don't have time for that maybe when I'm older I'll do Toastmasters um, so I did that we did camps we went to the University of Florida. They'd have like, they called it Congress back then, and now I think they call it like University Days. And I got to inspect different aspects of the Agriculture College, which was neat. I loved, loved, loved. Um, 
and it really did a lot of molding for me in preparing for my future one year I did legislature which was beyond awesome now I look back and I'm like oh I should have ate that up um, and it's where you do mock state legislator let it legislative you know practices so you you'll have first year students will be the lobbyist second years will be the Senate you know so you hold the different positions for a week and they have mock bills that they go through and they and it's pretty involved it's really actually involved in the process and how it gets done um 4-h is a great resume scholarship builder you do community service um i mean it's just really fantastic i think now so that's my history with it i'm a firm lover of 4-h um as a mom I'm a lover of 4-H because having six kids and having one income, I would love to go play baseball, but the cost to go play baseball is astronomical. And then you multiply it by a couple kids, bam, there went your budget. And for the most part, to just be involved in 4-H typically costs, I think, like maybe $5 a kid. And in our situation, in our county, I know not all counties because I didn't grow up like this. You can be involved in a number of clubs. So you don't pick one and you're just in one. And um, that $5 is for all the clubs you're involved in. So it's worked out well. And it lets my kids pursue interests that I would not necessarily, you know, um, explore. Maybe would be an answer. For that so last year we we're in a home the kids were in a homeschool club and a chicken club and by the time the chick the homeschool club kind of faded out because all the mommies all the homeschool mommies had crazy things going on two of us had babies one of us adopted no two adopted babies um and our leader was in the midst of um adoption through foster care which was an amazing thing to go through, but by the end we were all like, we couldn't, we couldn't maintain. And um, then they were part of the chicken, and that was right around the time I broke my foot, and we were all exhausted. And I'm seven months pregnant, so they didn't show their chickens. And at, by that point, they had kind of lost interest, which I hate to say, but it was a little bit more than them. But the cool part is they left that club knowing so much they really have a concept about chickens just from being half involved in that club they're very involved in the beginning and then we couldn't maintain it and some of that just has to do with age still of the kids so this year we're doing a citrus club which means three of my kids have citrus trees that at the end of the year will sell at the fair and they're gonna have to practice writing buyers letters and you know to advertise and market their citrus trees um, one of the things which I think is good and then they'll sell the citrus tree at the fair but they actually bought the citrus tree with their own money so that was $35 so that was like $105 I didn't have to come up with they took it out of their own bank account or bank account their piggy bank and they bought that um, they're doing the garden club this year which is fun I kind of pushed them into that. They weren't like really thrilled. They, they're like, we don't really care mom to do this. And I'm like, yeah, but you're going to do it. And, um, that one's a really small club and it's just getting its first year started and still a lot of learning practices, but they're already in love with it. And it's kind of cool because they'll have their own plants that they can put into the fair. Um, they're also part of the sign language club. They love that. The thing, you know, we've always watched Alex and Leah sign, you know, signing times with Alex and Leah. So I always had a good sense of sign language. But they're just like teaching themselves and they're watching new things. And it becomes a little competitive. Like sh there's an element of show off that they can do at the club meeting, which enthuse which makes them very excited to learn more, which, you know, hey, take what you can get. And they'll come to me and they'll be like, they'll be talking with their hands and I'm looking at them I'm like, Mama doesn't know. So you better speak. And I'm like, I don't know. But it's fun too because even with Orv, um, you know, my three, my two and a half, almost three year old running around, 
Um, they're constantly teaching him. Well, I got, hold on, let me, somebody has woken up and turned the TV on, so I figured I'd better get him where he wants to be before it turns into craziness. So they can do that, um, they're doing sign language, and then the other one that has worked out really well, and I was really shocked, is, it's an arts and crafts, um, club that they have, and they were just like, mom, we're doing this, I'm like, okay, have fun enjoy and the first year or the first club meeting they actually did um paper mache with homemade so here's my daughter like i will help you get this stuff ready you know and she's almost 11 like we're just a week or two away from being 11 and um she's all like let me assist you and i'm laughing because she already has been picked up like that reputation like she is hands on deck for the leader wherever it is but sneaky pot she's doing it because she wants to figure out how to make the paper mache so she's all like i will assist you so i can learn what to do and i'm just looking at her i'm like you're not making this at the house you're not making this at the house and i mean we got paper mache slewed all over the place and i'm just like i'm glad i'm here and not at home. So they're building paper mache stuff and they'll be painting it. So there's all these different things they can do. Um, because we are involved in four clubs means we meet four times a month. But I also know of like base, you know, if I, we were doing, I mean, I get it's a season, but if we were doing sports, it would be like two or three times a week. And I just laugh. I'm like, we have one week where we meet twice a week, twice that week in the month. And it's just like... So I'm really thankful, you know, it gives us a good balance and it gives us long-term thinking. Um, I'm supposed to, because of what's going on with mom and because of, you know, everything else, I wasn't, we were going to start a sewing club and I wasn't able to start that. And now they're doing something different that, um, it's like a, a six-week club instead of it being like every month club. So it's going to be a short six-week club. So we're going to actually do a sewing club. Because believe it or not, I do sew. And I sew a lot. But I haven't been sewing yet. And when I start sewing, you'll be like, oh my goodness. So that is 4-H. I think that it has some of the best. You can do as little or as much as you want in 4-H. And it really comes down to just getting to know the program. I do, you know, start light. If you start your kids early, just, you know, enjoy and realize there's a lot of stuff that you're not going to be taking part on. But it's just kind of getting your feet wet and getting to be known. At the end of the year are record books, and which is a great way. It's like almost notebooking on the topic, and you submit it, which is pretty awesome, but Last year we didn't get it done and we're already not doing so good this year. But it works out really well. So there's so many cool things you can do in 4-H. You really will get yourself the ability to um, have access to experts or very knowledgeable people. Um, and I mean, it's everything from public speaking. There's so many cool things. Um, the other aspect is... There's scholarships you'll have available to you that you wouldn't have had if you didn't do it. And it really does a great job building your scholarship resume, which that's why my kids are in it, whether they want to or not, because this will help them build scholarship, their scholarship portfolio. So... We're doing 4-H, National 4-H Week. I will probably keep my kids on their math and their language arts, but everything else we're going to set aside. So next week, when it's week nine, I will show you how I keep tabs on their stuff. So have a great 4-H week. Peace out.